Welcome to our Mom Critiques Wild Bow, a proud member of the Doof Network. In this podcast, my sister and I force our mother to read Pale, Wild Bow's longest work. I'm Jenny, and Malia convinced me to read Worm. I'm Malia, and Jenny convinced me to read everything else. And I'm their mom, and I still insist I like goblins, even after reading these chapters. This episode, we are covering the second half of Arc 5, Back Away. 5.4. While looking for Clementine, Avery goes against a pig dog boogeyman and meets Charles. She goes downtown and sees Daniel performing a very strange concert. Avery and Lucy prepare for conflict. In 5.4 Extra Materials, we see, read here, a phone call between Verona and Bristow on Sharon's phone. Um, While they, Verona tries to get Bristow to leave Kenneth alone, and he only becomes more interested. In 5.C, Clem talks to Guillaume in the fairy cave, then heads downtown. She joins Lucy and Avery in pursuing Daniel. Clem is able to convince Daniel not to leave, but then turns down the girl's deal. She shares what she knows about the car that was moving the furs. In 5.5, with Clem's help, the trio track the car. They work to strengthen the perimeter while Edith dispatches others. And then Verona goes back to her house and talks to her dad. Which is always fun. Always fun. And 5.5 Extra Material. Um, we take a look at the Kennet newsletter, which has some very interesting stories, including some missing persons, um, among other things. And in 5.d, 5.d, whatever, Toad Swallow and Blunt Munch get some new recruits. Edith and Matthew get a power source from Ted, and then Matthew defends the territory by letting the doom loose. Alpiana and Mariska fill in. Ted or Zed? What? You said Ted. Oh, from Zed. From Zed. From Zed. Should I start over? <laughs> Up to you. No, you're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alpiana and Marissa fill in the newest Kennet citizen, the multi-eyed other. And then we see Miss, who is unre- unable to reach a compromise with a finder on the paths, who attempts to bind her. And then she sort of kills him. She then manages to speak with the girls very quickly. And um, talks about how others expected humanity to be short-lived and that the long-lasting deals set up, like the seal and whatever, are doing some damage. All right. What did you think of these chapters, Mom? Okay. um, A little too gross for my taste, I will say. Um, I mean, they had a bloody mayonnaise mess. That, That caught my eye. And then a naked man with his groin, nipples, ears, nose, and lips cut off. I mean, you can't unsee that, you know, and um, and a big snot fight that ended tor- terribly. So mm. yeah, it was it was hard to hard to do. That's rough. That's it fair. Was rough. I don't remember any of that, but well, I remember the snot a little bit. What? I don't know if I just blocked it out. See, this is what happens when like a long time. It's not long ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jen summarized for this episode, so I'm like, wow, what happened? <laughs> No, it was bad, you I'm glad you blocked it out. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to know, mom. Okay, and this will make more sense later, assuming that Malia <laughs> cuts Black it and puts it. it in the back. Mom, what <laughs> ringtone would you set for Avery, for Lucy, and for Verona? This is not fair. You guys are not <laughs> allowed to slip in sneak questions. We're so I allowed. Mean, it's our podcast. Really? Okay, but I'm not that quick on the draw. Let me see. Um, I would try to do like, um, okay, what's new pussycat? That would be one of them. Mm, Okay. (laughs) Okay. You know that, right? Can you sing it? I want to hear that you know it. What's new pussycat? Whoa. (laughs) Oh, you got to put way more into it, man. (laughs) Just based on, just based on that. um, I've got, (laughs) I've got one for Lucy that like, it's terrible, but. It's terrible. Okay. Just based on the animal. Um, what does the fox say? Oh, and there there must be something with um, you know, not a deer a deer. deer, but a like, oh dear, you know, some you know, some like calling somebody with a pet named deer. What what's a song? There's Do Re Mi from the Sound of Musical. 
<laughs> there um, is still Ray Me. Um, a solo T. Yeah. There's yeah, dear that's prudence. true. That's true. There's oh, dear prudence. <laughs> God, <laughs> no, <weird>. no. <laughs> I like Do Ray Me better. What's a oh, little yeah, kid song? Better. You have little kids, Jen. You guys yeah, should get me. Yeah, but just plays like weird reggae music. No, that's not because- right. He needs to stop it. He needs to stop. <laughs> they need, I mean, that's why I need to live closer to you because I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. in this. There's a struggle between the grandma, you know, the grandma nursery like, rhyme I don't like it any more than you and do. And the reggae song. Because, <laughs> I mean, I like reggae, but the, I mean, I, I'm not that crazy about the songs he picked like they're okay but also it's all o- the only playlist that Mika wants to play now so i have to hear them oh, let, like man, that's all painful. the time um so yeah no i'm i'm right there with you like okay <laughs> i would be thrilled if, but i try to play them other things but okay anyway that was a good those. question you guys i like it okay yeah you're, you're like, <laughs> what's new putsy cat for verona what does the fox say for avery and do re- oh for lucy and do re me for Avery. And the best part about that is I think they would all absolutely hate this right now. You hate all of them. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. They yeah, I know, but that, that's, that's fair, like, though. Uh, you get that one and mine is worse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. The thing is, Malia, if I do pick that ringtone for you, I will pick up your calls faster than you've ever seen. <laughs> that's one thing about it. It's the only good thing I can see. Fair. <laughs> that's really funny. Oh, brother and you guys will see at the end uh i guess what our or the beginning the i don't think about. she should change anything we're fine they're used it's to us well. all right well we'll see i guess we'll see whatever malia's gonna edit it however she feels is right in her soul that's right so uh <laughs> so yeah so we'll just see <laughs> all right um, we're going to start with some listener questions then. Um, so Flower Priest asks, if you had to convince Daniel not to become a fairy, what would be your best argument? Okay. Um, I would just have to go with the good triumphs over evil. And um, being a star is nice, but but being evil is not the life to choose. You'll lose yourself, Daniel. You'll. It's just not worth it. And the main, the biggest thing is think of your sister, I mean, mm-hmm. think of your sister. You, she needs you and she'll be sad every day if you're not with her. And your friends will too. You know, mm-hmm. everybody needs you, not only loves you, but needs you. So you need to just stay here in your boring little life. It's fine. <laughs> it's your better boring than little life. Yeah. That's it's nice, mom. Oh, thank yeah. Your boring little life. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, everybody's life has. The boring part, oh, okay. But... Sorry. Yeah. I kind of oh, no, you, went too I mean, far there. Thing. But everybody's life has periods of, um, you know, just mediocre and all this. And actually, living as long as I do, I have to say, boredom and being mediocre is pretty great stuff when you compare hmm. it to some of the bad stuff that can happen. Hmm. That's yeah? that's true. That's a good true. Point. I think all of us here in this little computer room are looking forward to a new start next year. This is not this has not been the best oh, year. Hell yeah. It has not been the best year. Um, yeah. Yeah. Amen to that. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Come on, 2023. <laughs> Yay. I know. Don't you love it? It's like a Monday morning when you're like, I'm going to lose no. five pounds this week. And you got to, you know, Sunday night, you're still eating ice cream out of the tin. It's like, yeah, whatever. I'm going to be good tomorrow. And then Monday morning hits and the first four hours of Monday morning, you, you were so good on your diet. You're so optimistic and you can do anything, you know, and then it kind of goes downhill from there. But um, that's what I think of with a new year. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. this is it. Clean slate, everybody. We're going to have um, the perfect husbands or boyfriends, the most angelic kids, We're going to be like, (laughs) we're going to be exercising every single day and Mm -hmm. eating like things that grow from the ground and that you pick from trees, all those nice things. And um, I don't know, getting enough sleep and being actually shutting down our computer. What now? Actually (laughs) shutting down our computer. (laughs) Is that a thing? I mean, do people do that? So mom's apparently never turned her computer off. No, I've done it before. Um, <laughs> she couldn't remember how to do it at first. 
Are you making fun of me to the yes. world? Do you realize yes. we have 20 million viewers watching this? <laughs> that you guys might be a little kids. more than we actually have. <laughs> but now, like, because we got her back and we're, or we called her on the phone and she's like, tell, telling us what's going on. And we said, okay, well, maybe you should try to restart your computer. And she's like, oh. <laughs> Did anybody ever tell you you're a rotten kid, Jen? She's really rotten. (laughs) Did you guys do this to your moms? No. (laughs) Have a little respect. I'm changing your Jenny Jenny song to Aretha Franklin. Uh, I can't even say it. (laughs) The respect respect lady. Yeah. That is a big contrast between the, like, phone number on the bathroom wall asking for hookups <laughs> and the respect song. <laughs> so it's probably yeah. a step up. <laughs> okay. We'll see how we leave this at the end of this podcast. And um, yeah. Okay. So that's my answer. Uh, God, we get so sidetracked, you guys. I don't even know. Dang. Well, back on yep. track. Captain Rhino wants to know if, they should have told Clem more information about magic. Um, we talked about this last episode, but we do get some interesting perspective from Charles in this section. And Clem, you know, wants to know what's up. So what do you think, Mom? Okay, so I'm changing my I'm changing my answer on this one. I think it's time to fill her in because it's not fair. I mean, it's gone too far and it's mm-hmm. too confusing. And um, you just need to tell her what's what. Okay. And, yeah. I think so. I think I kind of agree. It's not like their responsibility to, but someone Yeah, but her. you know, she's yeah, it's it's not right. She's doing a lot and it's um she needs to know what's happening. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um let's see. Shin seven or Shin V, either one, uh says uh Charles talks about what it's like to be forsworn in this section. What do you think of how the forsworn are treated by people and by the universe? Do you think this should be a thing? Okay, let me just start by saying I don't think any of this should be a thing. <laughs> I mean, really? What are you saying? No, it's all kind of awful. And um, so, forsworn. Uh, I mean, it's kind of. I don't like Forsworn because he he has no hope. I mean, there's not even a, if there should be something, you know, like if you do, you know, a hundred good deeds or plant, you know, trees on every continent or whatever the thing is, there should be something that he can do to get back in the good graces. But there's not, you know, I don't like that no hope thing. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I don't think that should be a thing. And um, I mean, I get it. But I think everybody should have some kind of a way, even, no matter how hard it is, to get back to where you have hope. All right. I love that. Mm-hmm. Me too. I never thought about it quite that way. But yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, Flower Priest wants to know, what is your opinion of Miss as a teacher and surrogate parent to the girls? Okay, I love Miss, and um, I'm so glad she's back. I was I was really hoping she'd come back, and um, I think she's a great teacher and a mentor and kind of a um, you know a parent in a way. And mm-hmm. um, those girls need her. You know, they don't. Mm-hmm. Their parents, Lucy's Lucy's mom is good, but the rest of them are um, either preoccupied preoccupied or just really awful. So it's kind of nice to have mm-hmm. an adult figure that cares about them. Um so yeah, I'm glad she's back. Yes. So you're saying you missed Miss? Mm-hmm. No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, Jenny is so irritating sometimes. <laughs> no, she finds the stupidest things funny and she and then I do too and it's just embarrassing, Jen. Yeah, that's from your side, mom. That's from you. I so know I like it, but you only just, have uh, yourself to blame. Share that, that with those 20 million viewers, okay? <laughs> Well, if it makes you feel better, it's definitely not 20 million. So you, you already said that. In my mind, it's 20 million. And I want to thank all our fans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what it is. I mean, it's it's good to have hope. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. sighs> um, uh, see, like those 
poor Forsworn that have podcasts, they have no hope. Like, that's that right. We're going to get hey, any more. Yeah, listeners. we always have hope. It's we infinite. We always have hope. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> all right um captain rhino asks uh what do you think about miss killing the finder um it says in parentheses she pushed him through an arch which he strongly suspected was a trap which turned out was a trap and it killed him um do you think she was justified or should she have found a different option yeah i'm on miss's side and i think sh- she was justified to push um, I thought it was a woman, but to push that person through the window. I mean, she was stuck and had to make a quick decision. And yeah, I, yeah, I think it was okay. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I kind of agree. Yeah, I mean, part of it is that you don't know that person. Of course, those little goblin people, I didn't know who that other goblin was. Or maybe I did. Who did they? Uh, we, we'll get to that mm. later. But but that that made me upset. But this person was trying to get missed. So, yeah, you need to do whatever you have to do. Got to do what you got to do. <laughs> That's right. And mm-hmm. sometimes you just got to kill somebody. Push someone them out the to window. their death. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know, Mom, if we have a specific question about that part. And I know you love goblins. So <sighs> what what did you think about Toad Swallow convincing or like making that little goblin kill another goblin and okay the whole thing yeah because i really like goblins and the snot thing is really disgusting but sort of funny because they're goblins but but then they actually kill them i mean they suffocate him that was crossing the line and i want wild Bo to know that he should really he i i he sh- there's certain lines you shouldn't cross and that was one the the i mean you could kill the people snot in bite this, it was in this too series, much too far you, the what I said, yes, the snot fight was too far. Snot fights are fine, but you should have done something (laughs) to take the snot out of his nose or mouth or one nostril. So he was gasping for breath at the end and then he lives and then he goes and throws, you know, throws mud or poop or whatever he does. And they have their, their whole (laughs) little goblin fight, you know, but, Mm. but no, they killed him. You guys, I mean, that puts it into a whole other thing that crossed the line. And I just, I'm really sad about that. I am. I yeah. Yeah. Wait, what do you guys think? You two? Yeah. That is sad. Especially that they like made the little one do it. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. Know. I know. No, I know. Yeah. I know. Let's have a redo. We next time we do like in in ten years when we get done with this podcast, we can do it over and then we can go. Okay, how would you end this chapter? And I will have my opinions. That would be so much, <laughs> so much happier, you know. But that would not happen. So there. Yeah. 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 No, this is- it would be okay. Maybe in the next, maybe in a couple, the next arc or whatever, um, that little guy that was suffocated will come back to life. That would be awesome. I mean, stranger things have happened in this series, and you think he'll be all like cool and on their side and stuff. Oh no, he'll be out for <laughs> revenge. Except it won't be, it'll be it for Toad Swallow, not for that little guy. And mm. he'll be just mm. every day, Toad Swallow will have to watch where he's stepping and where he, what he's doing because there's going to be bad stuff every day. Yep. All right. That's a good prediction. Megafire asks, um, so we've seen a bunch of Kenneth others do some shady things in this arc. Has this changed who you do or don't trust? Okay. So, um, I'm not sure who to trust in this whole book. So it's always been like that. So I don't, I don't know that it's necessarily changed, except I probably trust Miss a little bit more. Hmm. And that could always be a mistake. But no, I just choose to trust her. I think she's going to be good. But um, I'm really disappointed in Toad Swallow. And I didn't think the goblins would go that far. Um, Mm hmm. And yeah, the thing with Miss, I do trust her. And one thing, this is totally different, but I don't really understand about Matthew and the doom. Can you guys explain that to me? Because that makes uh, me worry about him, but I didn't really get it. Just like what it is or yeah, like what it is. Like <laughs> trying to think of like so it's like Edith James um was supposed to die. So she was and, a vessel or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. like tried to kill herself and ended up in the hospital. Yeah. Um, so there's this sort of, I don't f- 
fully understand a lot of it myself, but there's this sort of like unbalance because she was supposed to die. And so there's now this like presence and this thing that is trying to like balance that. Yeah. It's basically like she was doomed to die. Um, but okay. she was basically like, um, she was just, it's at least to me, it seemed like she was just about brain dead. She was just like being sustained by like so machines. What's the doom? Um, well, um, so like the k- girl by candlelight went and like pretty much took over right. her body and all that right. and kept her alive. And so the doom is kind of like, um, as far as I understand it, at least like um, her, de- like she's supposed to die. So it's like her doom is like, or her death is kind of like always shadowed over her. Is it a power or something? Cause he sa- they said he used the doom to do something. So it's like, it's, it's kind of like this monster that has been created because she didn't die and she was supposed okay. to. And so to f- fix that situation, Matthew decided to like eat the tomb essentially like he he's like he's he containing it within it himself in his body yeah so that it won't kill her it can't like, get out, right wow and the longer like it goes on without uh actually killing her like the stronger it seems to be getting um and every now and then he kind of has to let it out so that he can still you know Dude, that's control. really awful. So it, is that the thing that's causing the rift between Matthew and Edith? That doom? Sorry, De- see, now you guys know how it feels. Ha ha ha. Speak more <laughs> about the rift between Matthew and Edith because Arc 5 was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> never mind. It, I uh, that's all right. I just didn't get yeah. the well, doom it's thing. like so it wants Edith James to die, right? And oh, so okay. it's dangerous for Matthew to let the doom do whatever it wants because it'll go kill his wife. But if it's a sentient-ish thing, so he can make deals with it. Like, okay, go kill these bad guys for me and I'll let you run free for 10 seconds or whatever. And he has to make sure his wife is far enough away that it can't get to it. Wow. Mm-hmm. Her. It can't get to her. Okay. Mm-hmm. What a spooky place to live, huh? Ursh. Okay. I got it. <clears throat> um, so it didn't really change who you tr- toads a little less miss a little more. Is that yeah. cool? Okay. Um, this question is awesome. Um, this is from evil dynasty. <laughs> um, and they say the year is coming to a close and jolly old Saint Nicolette is using her augury to check everyone's karma. The question is out of the can tears and snowdrop who has been naughty and who has been nice. Uh, bonus points. If you include Jenny and Malia. Okay, that's, that's a great the, question. That is the best question. That's really nice. And I have to send I have to send Evil Dynasty a card. <laughs> so <laughs> you, know, you have to give them their address because it's just the best. Um, Daniel's been very naughty for sure, but he needs some love. So I have mixed feelings about Daniel. I still really like him, but he sure got misguided on on la- that last arc. And Snowdrop is so nice and cute, and I love her. Yeah, she's great. Toad Swallow mm-hmm. is on the blacklist for sure. Very <laughs> naughty. Deserves a lump of coal. I, I just see I'm going goblin on you. He deserves to poop very big lumps of coal all year. So that's, <laughs> you know, yeah, that's me going goblin. And the three girls have been very, sorry. <laughs> that's well, this, hilarious. It brings out the gross in everybody, you know, it's just, ugh. so the, the three girls are have been nice. Jenny and Malia have been extra nice. You guys Aww. have been great this year. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. you have been extra nice too. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Arctic Art um, asks, uh, keeping up with the Christmas theme, what ideas for presents do you have for Kennet residents? Okay. I This just gets me. I love this too. And I want to send, I want an Arctic Art a card too. So you got to give those guys your address because <laughs> that's <laughs> so fun. Okay. Um, you know, I was thinking about, I mean, there's so many things I could have said for presents, but all I could think of was um, power washers and bug zappers <laughs> because, you know, there's <laughs> the power wash to wash the bloody mayonnaise from their, <laughs> you know, their porches and stuff like that. You've got these dead bugs all around. You want, well, I guess they're already dead, huh? Doggone it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but definitely everybody needs to be gifted a power washer. In I that like room. a leaf blower a- just to blow the dead bugs away. Mm. A leaf blower. That's good. But they'll, yeah, that's a good one, except you'll blow them over to the neighbors. It's just going to. Well, that's why they all them have another- them. <laughs> what? That's why everyone has one. <laughs> Your their bugs get blown it's over. You just keep on blowing them. Down. Oh yeah, Rrr, we'll take this. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Eventually they'll be blown Rrr. out, right? So yeah, no, it could cause it. Always could backfire on you. Mm-hmm. It, it sure could. That's a great. So, question. Wow, those are ran- random <laughs> presents, Mom. Really? I mean, what would you do? Funny. I mean, I think Edith would like a candle, like a nice, you know, scented candle. Oh, that's very nice. Okay. Um, Miss might like a big hat. Mm. <laughs> um, it's true. What about Maris Cargillame? John would like some uh, video games. Oh, okay. Uh, mm-hmm. He does like those. Um, Alpi would like, I wonder if she'd like like an eye mask for when she's sleeping or something. <laughs> mm. Make sure it's pretty dark in there. Friends. Or like good like earplugs. Hmm. Oh. What do you give goblins? What do you something get? disgusting? Do you nails and crap. Of, yeah. Rusty <laughs> you know, nails. You know those little like, guns that shoot little those little nerf ball things or something. And they'll put those those disgusting fun. things in them and just shoot them at each other. <laughs> you could just give them like a bunch of laxatives. You know? <laughs> <laughs> or make laxative brownies or something. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, that's like be pretty happy. Oh, yeah, they love it. You're right. Gosh, <laughs> oh, man, <clears throat> that's funny. Um, and then Tommy B wants to know the reverse. What gifts should they give you um, as a practitioner of Kennet? Okay, so I just have to say, one gift that always works is chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I always like chocolate. And then I was thinking further, maybe a villa in Italy or something. I don't know what the budget is, but both of them are pretty great presents. Yeah. Do you think that they would be living where they live if they could afford a villa in Italy? <laughs> you want to go fund me fun for this person okay. that, you know. Yeah. They go fund me yeah. for a villa in Italy. I'm sure you'd get so many donors. <laughs> Hey, this book is. I oh, this poor woman. Oh, yeah. She needs her villa. <laughs> Please donate. Oh, look! I've seen some weird ones, you guys. Come on. <laughs> never we can change it up a little bit, you know. I mean, we can, you know, embellish the story a little bit so that mm-hmm. they felt I really needed to go for my for health reasons, you know, to my mm. villa in Italy. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's creative. So I like that. Yeah. It's one or the other. I mean, if they don't have the money for that, there's always chocolate, you know? <laughs> you guys, you know what uh, I really want? This is okay. I shouldn't be saying this on a podcast, but I will. But you two, Christmas is, is like next week. And um, I know presents haven't been big on my list lately, but they have this thing on Amazon where you can do a wish list. And your kids mm-hmm. can look on that and they'll be like, hey, mom wants a villa in Italy. I'd really like to get her that. Oh, yeah. You know? An Amazon, like, on Amazon, an Amazon yeah. villa. Hey, there might be one. You haven't looked at my wish list, but I've got stuff on there. Yeah. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Right. But one of them, yeah, I'll, I'll add to it because there's one that I really, really want to get. And Malia should get it because you're going to come here and you're going to help me um, partake of Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'll just tell everybody because I haven't picked up the <laughs> okay. ones yet, but I, I want some martini glasses Ooh. because, oh. because okay. um, I learned how to make lemon drops and those Ooh. are so good, you guys. And then, but I want to make liliquoid drops or whatever you want to call it. Cause Ooh. I've got liliquoid in my backyard. That's kind of mm-hmm. going off right now. And the, liliquoid is passion fruit. So you make this really pretty orangey lemony, Lelequay martini, and then the rim of it, you've got to put the lemon around it and you dip it in lihimui powder. Oh my gosh, mm. that's a Hawaiian thing that, that I can't good. explain. Mm-hmm. But let me just it's say it's like dried plum with like spices except and stuff. A million times better. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, it's made of dried plum, mom. I mean, know, but yeah, it, 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 it is more it. than just that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, but anyway, so we want to drink those, Malia, out of some fun martini glasses, but I haven't chosen some yet. Cool. Because I've got this lemon tree. I 
I'm sure people are fascinated by this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll just say I've got this Meyer lemon with like, like 200 lemons on it. It's breaking the branches. Oh, and Oh, wow. Okay. Am I exaggerating? Get at, le- at least a hundred, Probably, but it's but... breaking the branches and they're, and one lemon, you've got at least a half a cup. It's, they're crazy. They're big lemons. Yeah. It's like they the avocados. Huge. I, Jenny, I'm so sorry. You're not coming home right now. Cause I'm really um, sad about that. I got eight avocados off the ground the day before that it was six today. I haven't even gone Dang. out there. And I was like giving them away. Huge, huge avocados. They're like the I size of your face. Post office again, yeah. like people in line, they thought I was so weird. And I'm like, no, these are, I got it. I don't want those are so waste. good. I know. I want, I want an avocado really badly. I, know. I did send you one one time. You did. And <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> trying to remember. I, I think it actually might have come through fine. No, are you trying kidding? to remember? You, you said don't, it, it was disgusting and don't ever do I mean, that. It was again. disgusting. I don't remember. I, I feel like, like I, <laughs> moldy and smushed and yeah, oozing avocado. Yeah, yeah maybe I just blocked it out. I know I tried to, I know I had some seeds from avocados. I don't know if they were the disgusting ones or whatever, because I was like, I'm going to grow a tree. This is before we had um, a a full wooden fence around the backyard. And I put the damn avocado seed outside just like in the meantime, and the damn deer got to it and ate the avocado seed. (laughs) Yeah, that's so (laughs) fun. I was really, I was really bummed about that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. There's more seeds. So yeah, I want some seeds. Save some seeds for me. Okay. Anyway, it's really interesting. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, I want to make. I'm excited about the uh, Lilikoi drop. That sounds great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of like um, want to ask about like the whole Daniel part of the you know of the chapters, like with him uh, singing to. Uh, like Kennet and those like glamoured Fay and just like everything going on with him. I guess I just want to hear your thoughts on him a little bit more. <sighs> What's that? Um, okay, that's that was my least favorite part of the whole thing. I mean, hmm. I really, I really didn't like it at all. I it just got too. I think it was just too dark, you know, and um. Mm-hmm. And it made me, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't enjoy reading it. You know, I love his, the singing thing. I think that's, that's the best. Cause I could just see, you know, even if he's getting a little bit bad and dark and stuff, but it got to where, um, he built that building, right. And, and it's just the spiders were kind of getting to me. And then I couldn't tell what was happening. I just knew that people were getting hurt and, Daniel had this sword he was trying to get people with. There was a spider that caught a girl and she went up in the air. And uh, see, I don't even know this black rose that held guests. What in the heck was that? <laughs> there were just some weird things, but no, I didn't like it. Um, Cause it was, okay. too, that was another crossing the line thing. I mean, yeah. um, I wish, I wish that kind of stuff. I think I wish that kind of stuff didn't bug me because I, I like it all up to a point. And I like, like you guys know, I really like, um, I prefer my novels to be kind of sad, but I want them to have happy endings. But I don't mind, you know, people getting run over by trains. Actually, I do mind <laughs> that. I don't like that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I talk about Anna, Anna Karenina. But yeah, the, the amount you try to get me to read that book suggests to me that. I know, you're never going to read it. Jeez. <laughs> It, but um, yeah. So I don't know. Did it was just kind of too dark. It was hard for me to to get through and actually read it instead of just skimming. At some point, I started skimming it, and I'm like, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. There's there's some parts in this story that like can get pretty dark. Um, yeah, but at least he got out of there. Yeah, you know. that's true. That I mean, good. oh man, yeah. Let me take a look and see if I have any other questions about this part before we get to a couple of our other questions um let's see oh man swiffer was under my feet just trembling and i just realized it's because there's oh, oh he's, it's because there's thunder oh, oh poor thing he's just shaking oh. he hates that that's awful no, it's okay <laughs> um yeah poor baby jeez um oh, i'm sorry swiffer um, I did want to talk a little bit about Clementine because five uh, dot C was uh, Clem's interlude, um, and 
I found it really, really interesting when I read it, just talking about, I think, um, just looking at all the different items and things that like she happens to run across. And uh, I don't know. I, I just thought that was really fascinating. So um, I was wondering if there's anything you want to talk about with that or that stuck out to you. Or 5.C. That wasn't in this. Yeah. It was. Oh, back so, it, okay. Um, can, can you talk more into the mic? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm cuddling my puppy. He's very <laughs> scared. Um, I don't know. That was, I really liked that part. You know, even though that was scary too, it just, um, mm-hmm. it's really interesting. And I really like Clem. I, um, did you know she pierced her own ear? <laughs> <laughs> the weirdest thing she get me, and I'm like, have to stop reading. I'm like, what? She had that earring, didn't want to let go of it, you know, because um, it was a good thing for her to hang on to, and she's just pushed a hole through her ear. Man, she's metal. It's rough. And it was, it, what do you? Th- what things you're talking about? The earring, and it had the watch. And what's your question, Jen? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, I, I just want to talk about like, um, just yeah, like in, um. Like, I guess what what's just the uh, most interesting item? Um, probably the earring. I mean, that's the thing that really sticks in my mind. But it was just interesting how that family came along, and she, um, they offered her fifty thousand dollars and an ordinary life and stuff like that. It's just, it's um, you know, by killing someone, it was weird. I don't know how mm-hmm. I'm lost in half of this book. Like, I just almost. I'm getting into it. And then I'm like, I don't know what they're talking about, <laughs> you know, so with a lot of it. <laughs> but, um, but I do like Clem and I, I wonder what she's going to do. You know, like, I mean, I, with, I mean, the trouble is that Mr. Drisco, Drisco, is, is a, mm-hmm. what's his name? Brisco? Bristow. Br- yeah. Okay. Bristow. He's, the sad, sad part is he's too good of a character to get rid of. You know, because I'd love to get rid of him, but I kind of think he's <laughs> he's too interesting, and um, he's got so many um, ties with all these good characters that I don't think he's going away very soon. Do you think it'd be better for Clem if he did go away? Like, what yeah, would change for her for the for the world? Yeah, <laughs> are you kidding? He's awful. No, 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 okay. <laughs> what? He, he is really snippy and rude to Verona. Yeah, Do you remember he- that conversation that we read? That's just the like dialogue. Yeah. Um, did you, he's just a, he's a dickhead. Yeah, no, he is. <laughs> I don't like him. Yeah. I mean, I don't, there's some of these people uh, that I don't like some, I really do like, and it doesn't have that much to do with good or bad. Like, like Daniel, I really like him and he's sure been a bad boy. You know, I think it's just, you know, and, um, but yeah, this yeah. the landlord guy. He's I don't I don't like him too much. But I guess you got to have you know he he does make for a real. There are really interesting things going on in that apartment though. So I think he should stick around for a while. See what happens. I'm trying to remember what they've talked about the um what they've talked about in terms of the apartment. But um, who do you think is your I, I guess the resident you're most interested in that we've seen. And if you don't remember much, that's fine. But yeah, probably Clem. I like her. She's really interested. I- interesting. Don't like Sharon at all. But but she's. <laughs> I, I don't think she's the most interesting either. I think it's um. She's the Clementine. worst. And Daniel's pretty interesting, but I think Clem for sure. Want to see what happens with her? Cool. Yeah. And I I just like to see if anything happens differently if she becomes aware of magic. You know. Hmm. It could she could make different decisions, maybe. Do you think she's gonna find out, at least in the story? Yeah, I do think so. Okay. Cause there's too much weird things happening. You know, it's just um I think somebody'll I think she'll find out. How do you do you think it's gonna be from one of our uh three protagonists? I I don't know. I would say maybe it'll come out by accident, you know, where somebody yeah, I so I don't think it'll be the protagonist. It might be, you know. Sharon or Sharon doesn't know either though, does she? Um, who's the person that was following her? Lucy? Uh somebody was trying to her because maybe Sharon went after Sharon, Lucy went after Daniel, and Avery went after Club. Is that right? Yeah, I think it was Avery. I think so. Yeah. So maybe it'll be Avery, yeah. Just to be fair to her. Because okay. she'll be stuck in cornered in some situation and they'll have to tell her. <laughs> hmm. Okay. 
Um, so Elliot has a really hilarious question <laughs> that I think they've been wanting to ask you since last episode. Um, <laughs> So he asks, uh, since you mentioned teaching Malia how to flirt, what are your top five flirting tips? <laughs> okay, Elliot, I appreciate that question. And um, <laughs> I gave it a lot of thought. So this is for your <laughs> listeners, too, who don't know how to flirt. Now, I don't, I, Jenny, Jenny and I are born flirts. And Malia just, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. You don't, I mean, I just didn't understand it. But you don't really flirt, Malia. I'm not saying anymore. What? I'm not 16 anymore. <laughs> I mean, I don't flirt anymore, except with like my husband. Do. But who <laughs> do I flirt with? Well, it's nobody. Not, it's not just to get a boyfriend. Flirt. You can flirt with you know with the guy putting <laughs> groceries in the bag. You know, it's not it, flirting. Doesn't have to be just like blatant. You know, it could be just a little a little smile or something. Gosh, you guys. <laughs> I'm just saying I don't think I do that anymore, but fair enough. <laughs> well, you had a hard year. Let's say let's make okay. 23 the year of, that we start flirting again. The year you know, of the flirt. The, flirt. <laughs> the year of the flirt. Okay, that'll be one of our goals. You know? <laughs> That's such a weird longer. goal. <laughs> Like, why is that going to be a goal? Like, like, uh, let's make, oh, to my gosh. Some, just so to, to share some love and happiness with the world, okay? I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I hope nobody ever actually knows who I am. Now I'm embarrassed. Okay, but I'm going to go back to my flirting. Right. So, okay. Now, this is real specific, and everybody should know how to do that. Malia, uh, yeah, Malia, try this with your fiancé. <laughs> You won't right even now. notice, but still try tell it. Tell Elliot to try it with his person. <laughs> Elliot yeah, to, tell Elliot to try it. Yeah, he's the one asking this. for flirting tips. Because okay. it works with, it probably works with girls too. I have to think about this. Okay, so you smile at a person and then you lower your eyes a little bit like you're you're shy. Because you don't want to be too forward. Mm. You know, if you're if you're one of these girls that just totally would grab a guy's hand and go, I like you and look at him, you're scaring the crud out of him. You know, you don't do that <laughs> or else you're you going to get the wrong kind of guy that's like, oh, yeah, let's go. You know, you don't want that kind of guy. You want mm. to have a little bit of intrigue and and, you know, all subtlety. that kind of stuff. What? A little bit of subtlety. A little bit of subtlety is really nice, you know, and um, you guys, you can still do this when you've been married 30 years. I mean, mm. Pat still thinks that I'm a mystery, which is so funny. It's ridiculous. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but sometimes <laughs> gotta, this is, wait, this is like number three. So wait, let me go back to number one. So you got that, um, just smile at somebody and be a little bit shy. Don't be too forward. Okay. And number okay. two, be interested in the person. See, that's both ways, guys and girls. Definitely be interested in them and ask questions about them. If you're, if you go out with somebody or, or sit on a bench with somebody and they're all just talking about themselves, it, it goes nowhere, but, um, <laughs> and especially, yeah. And especially it, it's really flattering to, um, to, be interested in another person. And if you don't know what to talk about, just sit there and ask questions for a half an hour and they, they'll be, you know, it, that's a great thing. Okay. Hmm. This is number three. I already said this be a little mysterious and um, Pat still thinks that I'm full of surprises <laughs> and it's not true at all. <laughs> it's, not true at all. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. So, um, Oh, okay. Number four, wear lipstick. And dress nice sometimes, don't always be in sweat. So just be once in a while, dress up, not all the time, just sometimes. And that's part of the mystery. When do they put lipstick on? Mm. It's, yeah, that is kind of a mystery. Because what if you just <laughs> put it on and you're making pancakes for breakfast and you're like, hmm, on lipstick, ooh. And he's like, hey, what's going on? And you're like, what do you mean? And you know, <laughs> that's like, I just look like this. I just woke up I like this. Up, I look this way. Yeah. <laughs> so weird. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And okay. then um, so you hear that, Elliot? Just put some lipstick on sometimes. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's bad rules. I don't know. And then number five, leave them wanting more. Play mm. a little bit hard to get. A little yeah, bit. or else you scare them. You can't scare them away. Mm. Boy, boys are sensitive 
creatures that are, um, they're not as, except the ones that are really, really full of themselves, you don't want those kind because they're, because they're too egotistical. It's not going to be fun. You want somebody a little unsure of themselves and keep them off balance. That's always fun. And keep them off thing, balance. I sound terrible. I sound like I just play these <laughs> games. I really don't. With that, I was, I, I swear, I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm digging myself in a hole. I'm stopping. I want to hear one flirt rule from both of you guys. <laughs> well, apparently I don't know how to flirt. So <laughs> come on, Malia, come up with something. Rule. What's oh, Tell me something that boys should do. I don't know if it's different than girls, but just tell me one thing that a guy should do. That a guy should do. Yeah. I mean, I think um, <sighs> these guys are stumped. <laughs> I'm just thinking like, um, well, because I was thinking at first, like a flirting tip that I would give, but you're saying like that what guys should do. So I'm you trying to think from the opposite tip side. If you thought of one, well, oh, I was just. Well, I, well, let me get both. Let me see. So, I mean, I think it just goes a lot a long way. Um, if just like just just listen and, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, it sounds kind of obvious probably, but I think like. If you're confident also, if, if, if you have confidence and if you show that you are actively listening. Mm-hmm. Gosh, those are, that should go to the top of the list. Those are both really good. <laughs> those are good. Um, yeah. In terms of a flirting tip that I've just thought of besides that, um, I think like and show like, I don't know, like don't be afraid to joke around and laugh at jokes. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't laugh at a joke that's not funny. <laughs> sure, you would. Just because that's kind of. <laughs> Who are you? I mean, I'm, <laughs> I, well, like, at least if it's like, I don't know, like, it, <laughs> you can laugh a little bit more than you normally would, I guess, if you're trying to play it up a little bit. But like, if it was like really, really bad, maybe smile or something. But like, I mean, it, don't make it obvious that like, don't, don't like start like rolling on the floor laughing over like a. <laughs> you know, why the chicken cross the road. No, I'm just kidding. Joke, yeah. sometimes if the joke is really bad, sometimes it'll make you laugh more and you'll, you have to tell it, shake your head. It's like and say so it's bad perfect. that it's good. Yeah. I mean, if it's, if it's genuine and you, then that's one thing, but <laughs> yeah, I don't even know, but I, yeah, yeah, I like that about the listening and having some confidence. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I was going to say the listening thing, but also like be yourself. Yeah. But the, like, the person that yeah wants to know about the other person because you're trying to show them you're interested in them so you mm-hmm. just be interested in them um but don't like contort yourself into something that you're not because if they yeah. like that person they don't like you so mm-hmm. yeah see Malia, yeah. you maybe you've got this better than i thought <laughs> i mean she's engaged so i think she's yeah, all she right engaged. i think she's figured a few things out <laughs> to be fair, i like had no idea ben was asking me out when he asked me out. He was being really subtle. She even went so on a date with him. He nailed and didn't it. He nailed know the flirting. It was a date. I backed out. I, I started... Oh, yeah. She backed out. Oh, you out. asked him out. Okay. No, no, no. I... Oh, wait. She backed what? out. I'm kidding. Story. That it wasn't... So my first year of law school, um, I had a group of friends and Ben was in that group of friends and I... He's a couple of years younger than me and he's always wearing like bro tags and I just like didn't think we were at all like on each other's I just didn't really consider it it was like oh he's cute and that's like as far as I considered it um and so one day between classes um all of our other friends were in class and we weren't and he was like hey so there's this new movie out like Parasite have you heard of it and I was like oh yeah it looks maybe kind of scary but also good and he's like yeah do you want to like see it with me or whatever I don't remember exactly how he phrased it but I got it into my head that like he only asked me because I have a car. <laughs> and I could drive to the theater. And That's I, where I the confidence thinks comes in. <laughs> I guess I didn't him to ask, to put it in like the group chat, I thought it just like occurred to him in that moment. Cause like, Ben has like ADHD and he's a little spacey or whatever. I thought he was just like, hey, movie, let's do it. And I was like, mm. okay. Um, but then like, he never put it in the group chat and he never asked me to pay for it. Um, but I got so anxious about like not being sure if it was a horror movie or not. Cause they were like, don't learn anything about this movie. Just go see it. And I was like, is it scary? I can't handle it. That I got so anxious that I texted him and I was like, I'm really sorry. I'm too anxious. I can't see this movie, but like, I will drive you and our friend Jason to see this. 
text Jason and I was like, Jason. <laughs> if you want to see this movie? I'll try. <laughs> but already bought tickets. I wonder if Jason was like Malia, you dumbass. <laughs> yeah, but it's not. Po- it's very possible. <laughs> but no, it's Tuesday no, or Wednesday yes, or whatever it was. So ah. and and I was like, Ben, I'm like, I will drive you to the theater and I will go pick you up and I will drive you back. And he was like, No, it's really fun. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He went on this movie by himself. Um, what? He went on his first date by himself. <laughs> <laughs> and he liked it. <laughs> and then, so then another thing happened to me. Jen, you where, have to tell that story at the rehearsal dinner, whatever it is. Yeah, that's amazing. Another, another, great another first thing date happened party. where. Um, in law school, they're like networking, like do it, like talk to people who know about law school and who are lawyers and blah, 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 and like learn to network. And I was like, oh, okay. So I ran into someone who was in my major in undergrad um, on campus and turns out he had just graduated from law school and um, he was like, oh, hey, cool. Yeah. Like we should, you know, like catch up. Let me have your, like, can I get your number or whatever? And I was like, yeah, networking. <laughs> 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 we went, <laughs> we went to this like brewery, uh, on a Saturday and we spent like four hours talking <laughs> about like professors he'd had and just like, you know, all sorts of stuff. Um, and I was like, this is kind of long, but whatever. And then we <laughs> <laughs> or whatever because we're leaving and he was like well this was really great we should do it again sometime and i'm like that sounds like something you say at the end of the day <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man oh. the story to two of our friends um mine and ben's friends being like y'all was that a date <laughs> and ben came up and heard the last part of me being like was that a date with this guy <laughs> <laughs> They leave and literally right then, Ben is like, hey, so do you want to go see like Jojo Rabbit? And I was like, that's not scary. Let's do it. Oh my gosh, Malia. And maybe we can get dinner beforehand. And I was like, dinner. (laughs) Date? And I tried tried to figure out whether it was date. I was like, (laughs) for the dinner, it's a date. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then he was like, this was a date. Goodbye. You know what, Jenny? I think both, I think both Jenny and myself have failed Malia. I mean, we yeah. had responsibilities many yeah. years ago. We and fucked up, mom. I, think, I know. Like, I feel bad. Actually, asked me out on an actual date before that in my life, so I just didn't know. You have boyfriends, Malia. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, did they have to carry a sign? Date number one. I mean, you had anniversaries. Well, How can you I not have Michael? Yeah, um, it was probably our first date or two, and then um, we were. Uh, Andrew was sort of set up. Um, yeah, he was your boyfriend. I mean, when you went places, yeah. you're like, we were set up though. Yeah, so different than like figuring out this person likes me. We were like set up on a date. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know what? You're engaged. <laughs> so you did it. Like, yeah, you're okay. Congratulations. You made it. <laughs> oh, I'm so confused. <laughs> All right. I do have a question for you, mom. Oh, no. <laughs> this Who... could be anything. Okay, what? I, I think I want to say three. So who are your top three characters that you think would flirt the best in mm-hmm. the story? Would flirt the best? I, yes. I definitely know two of them. <laughs> or at least two of them. I, I'm, I got to say Daniel. <laughs> he would sing, That's you know. He, I mean, yeah. he, would, he wouldn't just sing. He'd like hold your hand and he'd he'd be strong, you know, and he has a nice voice. And mm-hmm. he'd just do, you know, he and I, th- I don't think of him as being weird although he probably is totally weird but i just think oh he's probably cute and he'd just do a sweet little you know whatever so i i I like daniel he'd be a good flirt and um other flirts gosh i don't know if you can't Um, think of three that's okay but i'll know your top see i don't think any of those three girls are good flirts at all (laughs) they they need lessons (laughs) um, well they are like how how old are they right now? And They're old enough to flirt. Thirteen yeah. or fourteen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they can do it. Well, well, yeah, they're yeah. old enough to flirt, but they're young enough to suck at it. <laughs> you know. Uh, okay, but um, 
okay, I'm not saying else? that they are going to suck at it, but there. I'm saying they have there's a good excuse. Matthew and Edith, and there's goblins, and there's um, if you well, if you can't think of anybody else, the name no your worst one. flirt. Yeah, who's the worst flirt? <laughs> The apartment guy. <laughs> He's a creepy old man. Okay. And the, and, and the goblins. Oh, I mean, they would be trying to flirt. flirt and snot would be flying out of their mouth. I don't know. <laughs> I got to see. The, I, I well, Alexander remember. would be a good flirt. What? I was thinking mm. Alexander would be a good flirt. I was He'd thinking. Be a good flirt. Well, I'd probably be a good Zed. Flirt. Zed is kind of a good flirt. Zed would be a good flirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Raymond and, would be a bad flirt. <laughs> Raymond would, would be a bad Ray Sunshine, the man you want to take on a date so you can use all of his cool tech shit. <laughs> <laughs> the worst is Mr. Bristow. Bristow. Yeah. That's true. Um, let me think. Yeah. I think uh, uh, I think Lucy Where do you think Toad Swallow flirt? would rank? What? Where do you think Toad Swallow would rank as a flirt? Oh, God. I know he, you're not I know you're mad at him right I'm now. I'm mad at him, but he might be decent because he's he's clever. <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But no, I hope he fails. He doesn't deserve <laughs> any happiness. <laughs> he doesn't. Okay. Yeah. And um, this is a great question. Let me think. Oh, um, Snowdrop could be a really good flirt. She'd she- be good at uh, playing hard to get. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's really like true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. like yeah i i'm not interested i know <laughs> like i don't think i want to see you again <laughs> oh that's so sad <laughs> it'd be worse if she said i i like you a lot you're my favorite oh, person in trouble i know <laughs> oh that's hilarious um verona's dad would suck at flirting <laughs> oh yeah He'd be the worst person to go out on a date with. Oh the whole goodness. time he's just whining and complaining yeah. about his life and his wife, his kid, his illness. I mean, he must have been okay at it once because he did get married and have a kid. People change. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's not that same person. Oh, I have a question. Or he's tricky. About mm-hmm. something totally different. I really like oh. the news- newspaper thing. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. what was the deal about? care at the hospital and people quitting the hospital and um patient violence i'd like to see something happen with that but i don't know what i don't i didn't just like it didn't elaborate the just like violence is increasing at the hospital yeah i'm trying to remember I mean, what it didn't we elaborate, so you guys might not even remember i just thought that was interesting i thought people it, that was canada day right and i thought people sort of went nuts i thought maybe that was like a daniel related thing but maybe it wasn't <gasps> oh it, it probably was yeah it everything was related to daniel that day yeah <laughs> yeah or maybe like one like did clem have some object that made people angry or something she had that earring that made people like really really freaking want it yeah, yeah. um <laughs> i don't know what that has to do with the hospital though yeah, I don't know. It was it was only it, it just alluded to it, and then I thought, ooh, that could be kind of neat. But I don't. Yeah. Okay. So if that's the last thing, um, I want to know what your three things are, Mom. Okay. Um, I will go back to that. Wild Bo has a great imagination. I really do. Most of the time, really like that. <laughs> So, I mean, centipedes decked out in jewelry. That was pretty cool. Because I could you see a hundred little bracelets on all their arms clanging around? That was kind of neat. And the man, there's a man that can breathe underwater. That was cool. Um, I love the newspaper articles and ads. Um, <clears throat> okay, number two, this, we didn't even talk about this, but I think this will come up again. There was something about um, this person that had a number. And um, like 1,000 oh. something. And then there, once you get up to 7,919, then they all die. I'm like, ooh. That was, isn't it like everyone on earth dies or something? Yeah, everyone dies. <laughs> that's the end of everything. Them, yeah. Everything. Wow, that's like the Armageddon or whatever, you know? It's like, yeah. Creepy. It's basically like, yeah, they, they're they just like, oh, well, like, I'm only number blah, blah, blah. So it oh, hasn't gotten there yet. Does. Oh, I thought it was just that group. See, that's worse. No, everyone no. dies. <laughs> everyone no. dies. Yeah. So, so I yeah. bet that comes up later, right, guys? <laughs> we can't tell you. You can. I mean, we can, but we, we won't. 
I'm not done, mom. So okay, I bet it does. <clears throat> That's an interesting like premise, though, isn't it? Like I thought that was pretty fascinating <laughs> reading that. No, I did, that's why it really caught me. But I'm like, what's going to happen with this? Because I think they're supposed to get people to get that tattoo or that, you know, to be a part of that group. And the trouble is, if you only have five people that are part of that group, and you got to go up to 7000, it's going to take a long time. But once they have 1500, it's yeah, going to yeah. really go for it. You know, the, this is going to no. build a lot faster than you want. Mm-hmm. So somebody's going to have to intervene. Yeah, that's what I think. You might be right. I don't know. Yeah. Um, what if like they just mentioned that and never mentioned it again? <laughs> I would know, just throw away I'd thing. Go back to the things that uh, to see if he follows through with stuff because there's so many little tidbits of fun facts, you know, or not fun unfacts, you know, whatever they are. That um, it would be interesting to see how many aren't followed up with. I think it's got to be followed up. I mean, how could that? That that is a good one. He'll follow up on that. That's a good one. And if he doesn't, he's just making us all wait or keep reading. That's a trick. He's got a trip to keep us all in there because wait, I still need to happen to see what happens with those people with that group. Oh my gosh. Okay, so number three is Merry Christmas. <laughs> Yay. Merry and Christmas or happy holidays or yeah, happy Hanukkah. Have a great Happy Kwanzaa. A great holiday happy. and Christmas and New Year happy, is happy. a new start, you guys. A no matter start. how rotten your year has been. Oh, just right when I said it's that, there's 2020 this of lightning. What? Oh, <laughs> <You're> 20. <laughs> Sorry, that was a funny image. Like, no matter. This has been a terrible year. Oh, and then there's this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. All right. So, 2023, it's going to be the year of the flirt. The year (laughs) of actually turning your computer off. Okay. The year of new ringtones. (laughs) And new rings. Right, Malia? And new rings. New ringtones. I love it. Yeah. See, we can always start over. Set a ringtone for someone special to you today. (laughs) Yeah. That's one of the, that put that as one of your questions. I like the ringtone thing. That's awesome. But um, I have another question for you, mom. Oh boy! I okay. know you, you always get nervous. You're like, "What the heck is she?" I know. Say? Makes my stomach um, hurt. Who? Which? Which characters would you think would be good people to invite to Malia's wedding? <laughs> I love who should I invite? <laughs> That's a great one. Oh, let's have Daniel sing. That's awesome because <laughs> because th- that gives meaning to his life. You know, he can be a star for one day, except not he can't outstar <laughs> Malia. But- He's the star, Bob. What are you saying? He's a star, but you know, in his mind, he could do something nice. <laughs> he could sing a good song where everybody's happy. And um, okay, so Daniel, trying to think what else. I I'd really like to meet those three girls, so we should have them. Mm-hmm. Okay, that'd be cool. Um, no goblins allowed at the <laughs> wedding at all. That's fair. So, yeah. Um, Would you invite the fairy? No way. No, those guys are trouble. <laughs> they they look no, they're trouble. I don't trust okay. them. Um, I think that's about. I wouldn't even invite Clem. She's trouble too. Yeah, I think that's. I was going to ask like Malia, would you ex- accept like a, a wedding present from Clem, or definitely <laughs> not? <laughs> yeah, that's don't do it because I feel like she doesn't. She's aware that these items fuck people's lives up and stuff. So mm-hmm. I think that she wouldn't give me something bad but, but i wouldn't be worried about it it's like but i mean like if she wouldn't she might not give you something bad on purpose but right. could she give you something bad on x i mean maybe she couldn't but um i don't know <laughs> or something i'd be worried about it mm. i would too even if it's even if it's money malia hundred dollar bill i mm-hmm. i i think i'd send it back unopened be thanks so much for the thought but no be not be polite but be like oh i just can't accept this thank you <laughs> they got lost in the mail and just like yeah it got lost it. in the mail i don't know or, yeah just say thank you and then give it to someone else who's life's gonna suck <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay another question um who do you think would give the best what it wedding presents Ew. Or who would you most like to receive a gift from 
I think Zed would be cool. Oh, that could be cool. Part of me was thinking um, Gilme, but I'm not sure. Like, because I think he's m- not as shady as Marisica, and they could yeah. give him something really like pretty. But yeah. maybe it's not worth Ooh. it. <laughs> it's true. He does seem more trustworthy, I think. But <clears throat> okay. What do you think, Mom? I guess you see. I don't. Want to I don't trust from? anybody. Maybe I miss. would take maybe the gift. I would take gift the gift her. from um, Snowdrop. Yeah, that's true. That'll be fun. Snowdrop or Miss, yeah, mm. yeah, or Miss. But I do Snowdrop because that's it'd be something really sweet that you'd always want to keep. Mm. Yeah, that's true. That would be really cool. Well, awesome. Um, well, now it's time uh, for us to get a book recommendation for Mom. So, what depressing story are you going to tell us about today? <laughs> okay, no, I. I I don't know what I've been reading besides this book or what I've been doing, but I'm going to recommend one. I think I just recommended this already, but, um, but I've been doing something. Okay. I love giving advice. So let me just give this to you guys. One thing you should do with your significant other. This is another thing to start next year is to read a book to each other. You, you girls too. It's awesome. It's really a, a really neat um, tradition that brings you close. And Pat and I have read several books to each other. and We haven't done that in years. And so I started mm. reading a book. We started um, because, well, to tell you the truth, because um, Pat had a, um, a, a small stroke a little while ago, and he, mm-hmm. he has speech therapy, and they're coming by and they're saying, make him read out loud to you. So, um, so I've been having <laughs> him read a little bit to me, but then I go on and read. So I got a book that I knew we'd both like, and it's, and I already recommended to you guys, it's called Bel Canto by Ann Patchett. And, um, and he's really liking it. And me too, because I haven't read it in a long time. And it's, it's apparently loosely based on a um, true story. And I don't remember Hmm. this um, Hmm. happening, but it was, this happened in somewhere in South America. And um, they had this lavish birthday party for this guy that was um, an ambassador to Japan or something like that. It was a powerful businessman uh, and um, an opera singer because he was a huge opera fan came um was the guest there at this party. And then they, um, these terrorists took over and took the whole group, like over a hundred people hostage. And this thing apparently happened and um, oh, they were wild. hostage for about two months. And so the rest oh, wow. of it, I should Google it and try to figure out how the real story ended. But in this book, um, because of the relationships over, um, over two month period, um, some of the, people who were enemies became friends and even fell in love and things like that happened because it all changed, you know, after stuff, after you got to know each other and stuff. And it's a really interesting book. Um, So I really liked it. And yeah, you guys would lead it. So my question to you two is what book are you going to read with your husband, husband slash fiance? Damn. That's a good question. (sighs) I've been trying to get him to read some of these stories um i just need to get him into fiction in general just in general yeah. what does he uh, read if it's not conspiracy I mean, theory books <laughs> oh no get him yeah get i don't him know why he yet. likes oh, that yeah um, maybe he, well, he reads other things too but he <laughs> it's like the thing i most remember like it looks like just <laughs> i'm just like oh dear but he likes that stuff um i guess it's fun for him um, so maybe this book or something one of these I'd love to, but I think the length is kind of uh, a bit much for him. He really liked Plus watching they're... Lord of the Rings, so maybe I could oh, read some of that. That's a good one. Yeah, do something. I, I'd i recommend you do something a little bit that ends. Like this one doesn't end. It doesn't <laughs> have an ending. <laughs> <laughs> that's a simple uh, recommendation. Make sure the book funny. says the end someplace. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think you should do it. That'd be really cool, you guys. How about you, Malia? Um, we were listening to the Wheel of Time audiobooks for a while. I don't know if that counts. Um, I don't know. Does that count? Does that ever really end? I it guess does. it does. It's just really long, but <laughs> um, that's kind of neat yeah. though if you do it together. Yeah, because it'd be nice if he would read these too, but he has a similar attention span issue. Mm. Um, so maybe I should read him like, or we should read like a Jane Austen novel or something because mm-hmm. he's enjoyed. Some of the movies, and that could be fun. That's a good idea. 
Yeah. There's, there's so many good books. There's mm-hmm. so many I'll send books. you guys some, or some recommendations. Yay. There's also, I mean, the first one we read, everybody probably thinks this is really boring though, but we read um, Less for Life by Irving Stone, which is about Vincent van Gogh and his life. Mm-hmm. And um, he, he, he had a fascinating life, kind of tragic and, and, but very interesting. And it's a true story. And then you go look at his paintings after that and you're, and they have totally new meaning. I mean, it's, it's good for you to read things outside your genre too, I think. But, um, but that was a interesting book because it's a, you know, and I, I think you guys would like it. Jenny's scowling. No, 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 sorry. No, no, no. I, I got distracted because I was just thinking about like, huh, I wonder what kind of like weird books are out there because I'm sure there's some really unusual ones. And uh, <laughs> there's a list of a hundred must read strange, unusual novels. And I haven't oh, really? read that far, but like the very first one, it says Orcs and Crake by Margaret Atwood. And the only thing it says is in the future, for starters, people will have blue butts. <laughs> They'll have what? That's all it says. People will have blue butts. Ah, man. I, that's, I read that book for... <laughs> did uh, you really? Of course don't you did, Leah. Blue- <laughs> <laughs> Was it really weird or unusual? Or Yeah, I mean, it's... Um, Margaret Atwood wrote, like, The Handmaid's Tale, so she has, like, a really... Uh, she's a great imagination also, but like, yeah, it's very dystopic. It was like, um, environmental hey. focused, um, and a guy remembering what it was like before, like things all went shit, but he was talking a lot about like how there weren't cows anymore. And I don't know, all sorts of stuff. Interesting. Yeah. I think it's a trilogy or something, but I only read the first one. I've got some weird sound books mm-hmm. on here. Like what is, okay. This is, this is a, this is a really weird. Uh, these are all like one sentence summaries, <laughs> I guess, because I guess there's a hundred of them. So it's like we need to keep it short. Um, so this one's called In the House Upon the Dirt Between the Lake and the Woods. Hmm. Gosh, it sounds a, almost like a Robert Frosch poem. <laughs> it almost does, but it <laughs> but seems quite. very different. Um, the summary is a man swallows his unborn fetus like you do. And it whispers dark secrets to him from inside. That's so weird. Okay. Oh, brother. Yeah. Jeez. Oh man. That's bizarre. Um, let me just, I don't know. I'm just like, yeah, that was just a weird one. Um, thinking of ringtones. Well, I guess we should wrap up this episode. <laughs> Thanks Probably for the should, time. but no, I'm just like scrolling down this list. I'm like, <laughs> sorry, but all right, all right. I think it's funny that you you always just say whatever book you're currently reading, and I guess that means you like it. But you could like tell us why we should read Anna Karenina or A Tree Rose in Brooklyn. You know, it doesn't have to be what you're reading. <laughs> no, because you true, guys have but... you guys have wrecked it for me. I mean. What? <laughs> You've ripped it for me because I've been telling you to read these classic books since you were like 12 and you've never read A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. You didn't even like it, right? You're so funny. What? I haven't read it. Uh, you haven't read it? What's so. wrong with you? That's Hello. That's why I don't tell you stuff. Anna Karenina, Snow you're Falling supposed to. And I really loved it. What'd you read? Snow Falling on Cedars. Oh, yay. She read one book. That is a good book. I also read The Prince Against Heck. Okay. You gave me too many sad books to read. They weren't, I haven't given you dead dog stories. Okay. And you need to just talk about how can you read? These things have spiders eating people's eyeballs and centipedes crawling in and out of things in there. And you're fine with that. And then you can't read, oh, his dog died. I'm so sad. I'll never read another book again. (laughs) What? The dog dying is too real. This stuff seems real to me. I mean, I could feel those centipedes on me with their bracelets clanging. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fair. But why would you read that when you could read Bear oh. versus Shark, which is when a young boy wins an essay contest and gets to take his family to Las Vegas to see a bear wrestle a shark? <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, this is it. I'm going to make you guys read a book. Let's hold. We we have to suggest a book that's 500 pages or less and make each of us read it. I'm going to search for you guys. 500 not, pages. I'm not going to be less. nice either. I'm I'm going to I'm going to find something that you guys need to read. Why is this like a threat? Like. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I got to think about this. What are my favorites? Oh, there's this great There's book. a book that's titled 500 words or less. <laughs> what? What a great title, huh? Yeah, and that's so catchy, Jen. What's that about? Um, it says, let me see here. Um, Nick Chen refuses to spend her senior year branded as the girl who cheated on her charismatic and lovable boyfriend. To redefine her reputation among her Ivy League obsessed classmates, Nick begins writing their college admission essays. But the more essays Nick writes for other people, the less sure she becomes of herself, the kind of person she is, and whether her moral compass even points north anymore. That's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> huh. Well, well, mom's, yeah, mom is stuck in a Hawaiian storm and uh had to drop from the podcast for the moment. So we'll do the outro. Um, but we pretty much talked about all that stuff that we wanted to talk about. So yay. Um our mom makes cards, greeting cards. Uh, and we've been slacking a little bit uh on sending uh, or on picking people uh for a little bit, I think, to send them to. But if you comment, we will try to pick someone. <laughs> or at the very least, the two people mom mentioned, you can send us your address and we'll try to send you guys cards. Yeah, message us on Discord and we'll give mm -hmm. her your address and she'll send it your way. So. Yes. Yay. Um, can't, no guarantees on when it will get there, uh, but we'll do our best because it takes forever sometimes. Yeah. So I'll read mom's part. Um, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please subscribe, share it with your friends, and leave a rating and review. If you'd like to support Wildbo, go to patreon.com slash Wildbo. And if you want to support our mom, check out her blog at www.createwithcheryl.me. I was going to like shout me when you were like, if you want to support, you know, me. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, you can also check out Pale in Comparison, a podcast where Malia uses her knowledge of Pale to guess what happens in Pact, one of Wildbo's other web serials, and I try to not give anything away. In addition, check out all the other great shows in the Doof Network and support us at patreon.com slash doofmedia. Malia and I actually just recorded um, with uh, Elliot uh, on a couple episodes um, for Pale, Refle Pale Reflections. I can't speak. Um, and I know at least mine was kind of long. I don't know how long Malia's was. It was pretty long, too. It was fun. Um, thanks to Elliot for having us on. Thanks to yeah. Ruby for being gone so that we can come back. So. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, it'll be good for you to come back. But we did have a really fun time recording. Yeah. Um, you can follow us on Twitter while it still exists, at Pale Comparison. <laughs> Or send us an email at paleincomparisonpod at gmail.com. Um, keep a lookout for that Reddit post at r slash parahumans where you can share your thoughts on this episode and enter the giveaway. Um, yeah. Also, I don't know if we've plugged this in a while, but you should join our Discord. If you go to yeah. doofmedia.com slash Discord, um, you can hang out. You don't have to be a patron or whatever, and you can come tell us all your thoughts about all the stuff. Um, about everything. Yeah. Also, I meant to ask you this earlier, Jenny, but we can decide this now. So next weekend is Christmas. Should we just mm. officially skip a week of podcasting or what? <laughs> I feel like we probably shouldn't record on Christmas. Um... I mean, we could try to record on the 26th, which is the Monday. Or the 23rd. Or the 23rd. Okay, let's we're gonna, let's try for the twenty third. But if it doesn't, we may very well. Uh, I don't know. All right, it's up in the air. We'll next try. Week, the plan is to do it. So we're gonna try to do it. If we okay. don't do it, uh, um, sorry guys, but <laughs> you know, it's Christmas and stuff. So. Yeah.
This episode, we are covering the second half of Arc 5, Back Away. But before we start talking about it, we were talking about ringtones. Oh, <laughs> okay. And we decided to start recording. <laughs> What are we saying? This is how we're this is how we're sm- <laughs> seamlessly going into that topic. Yeah, really. <laughs> a great segue, Malia. Good segue. Oh, we forget about it if we didn't keep going right away. Okay. So how do we start? So I was okay. So Let's just start with Jenny. Some yeah. context. I was telling because uh, I'm on call this weekend, so I was telling Malia and Mom that I have a very specific ringtone for call, and I played it for them. And they liked it, and mom said I should share it for the podcast. <laughs> so I'm going to play it. I feel like this is a weird time to do this, Malia, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> it's your fault. All right. Get the fuck out of bed, bitch. Go. I wish you guys could see my daughter's dancing. It's really the best. <laughs> Kind of the best. (laughs) Yay. Oh, they're still going. There you go. That's my, uh, that's my call, uh, ringtone for every resident who's going to call me because they might wake (laughs) me up in the middle of the night and (laughs) it stands out. (laughs) What can you up in the middle of the night before? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Like 3 a.m., midnight, <laughs> stuff like that. And it's like, oh, you know, and I'm like, all right. <laughs> this is time. Okay, so then I was all, ha- they thought I'd be really offended. But Jen, I can't, under- I can't understand all the words anyway. And it makes me kind of happy. I mean, so- I'm going to be honest. I-, I was 50-50. I was like, she's either going to love this or she's going to be kind of appalled. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I kind of, so. I'm sorry. I kind of love it. I'm sorry for anybody <laughs> who it shatters your whole opinion of me, but no, I, I love it. <laughs> so then I decided I need to have a ringtone for Jenny and another one for Malia. And so Jenny, there's that, there's that, da, 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 whatever those numbers Wait, are. Before we talk about that, what I do those? want to give credit oh, okay. to the person who, yeah, is singing uh, my ringtone. Um, and it's, I probably, you guys know I mispronounce everything, but um, Mark Rebier, Rebelay, Rebier, I think. Um, and it's called Your New Morning Alarm. And he's really, really, uh, so good. he's he's great. He's really funny. And Does he have some other songs we should look at? Let's do that at the end of the I don't thing. know if we should look at them, but. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know if we should look at them, but he or does me. have a lot of other songs that are really fun. Um, but. uh yeah, I don't know if I want to listen to those with my mom. Be Maybe I should up. pick those for your ringtones, you guys. Lord. You can select your own. <laughs> Sight unheard. <laughs> okay. Well, pick <sighs> Jenny, you know what my song is for you? Can you find it on your phone and play it? Because I can't remember. <sighs> yeah, eight six seven five three zero nine. Right. So you got to give credit to whoever sang that a million years ago again. Hey, okay, mom, do you know like what that song's about? No, I just remember the, there's something about Jenny. I don't remember. It's yeah, a Jenny it's, song, right? Called it, Jenny. It is a Jenny song, but it's. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let, let, let's look up some lyrics. Um, they didn't have like Tommy Two Tone. It's two-tone. what? Tommy Two Tone. Tommy yeah. Two Tone. It's Tommy, Tommy Two Tone. Tommy Two Tone. They didn't have bad lyrics back in those days. It's about. That number is written on a wall, mom. It's, not, it's written on the bathroom wall. Oh, and it's about okay. like calling a girl for like. You know, you sure. Well, then where did Jenny come I'm from? Positive. I mean, it just starts because well, it starts off by saying, hey, Jenny, Jenny, who can I turn to? You give me something I can hold on to. <laughs> I know you'll think I'm like the others before who saw your name and number on the wall. OK, so. just play it real quick because they're the, maybe they don't even know. <sighs> Is this sort of a copyright violation. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Tommy, Tommy Ten Tone. Sorry. Like, like everyone, you can look it up yourself. I'm not going to play the whole damn song. I already just, no, just play the number. Nine, nine, eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. 
There That's we go. That's literally it. But I want to hear it. the Jenny part. Oh my God, Mom. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> you realize that we have a podcast to do, right? <laughs> oh, you're right. You're right. Okay. And Malia, um, what's a Malia song? There are so many. I'll, I'll have to look it up and get back to you. Oh my gosh. Why did we bring this up right now? <laughs> oh God, Whose man. fault is this? It's yours, Malia's. Jen. Hey. Just, <laughs> you press it up right it. now. <laughs> oh yeah, Malia. <laughs> recording it because it was funny no it and is that- funny but like but I, I was i was assuming we we're gonna wait for an organic moment instead of just being like hey just because i know well, people I had one for me and i thought she'd forget and apparently she oh. just didn't have one for me she just didn't have one I, 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 this was a yeah this was just something we thought of like one minute ago <laughs> so now i have to do a malia winner malia's gonna be sad you guys mm-hmm. um, gonna be sad malia, apparently there's malia, a song malia. called malia malia what? Well, there's probably like a hundred of them. No, it's that, it's called Malia Malia. Let me let's, let me see let's what is play this. it and um and give the person credit. <laughs> Poor Tommy Two Tone. Now I feel bad. <laughs> At least I thought. That... Okay, Malia song. I mean, it could be Maria from. Oh, it should be the Disney one, except it's just not. Okay. Or um, how do you solve a problem like Maria? Those are the two I really like. That's a good one. That is Maria from West Side Story. That one. Yeah, but that that's too. not Malia. It's Maria. Yeah, but just pretend you're Japanese. <laughs> Man, this feels like such an awkward episode so far, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we should start over. It's so no. wrong. Okay. I would start over. This is a one take show. <laughs> it is okay. Like, I'm just messing here. Are you, one of you guys has to play this. Malia, Malia. This is your song, Malia. Okay. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but this is such a terrible recording. <laughs> can't hear a thing <laughs> where are you guys i lost you again oh there you are Gosh. malia you better edit this like heavily <laughs> <laughs> malia why are you hysterical what did i miss I, I didn't even listen to the song yet i'm not I, like honestly she's, di- she's like she's like dying right now why i want to hear it know. now that's okay, it let's let me see here i'm gonna i'm gonna play it here What? I am so not putting that on my ringtone. What? Malia, stop it. Okay. Oh, that's horrible. No. Right. Okay, that's it. Shake, 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 Malia. Okay, no, okay, Malia. Please keep move us to the end for the love of all things. <laughs> Holy, <laughs> please just move it to the end. <laughs> okay, summary of chapters. We're moving on. <laughs> good lord! Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. okay, yeah, we need to move this. Yeah, to the end. okay. Take and a we breath. Can, I think we need to make our outro song the Malia Malia song, but or the wake. Oh, good morning that'd alarm. be great. I don't know. Or the we what? Can, or the, oh, the wake new up. morning alarm. Whatever. Why doesn't anybody like my Jenny one? I mean, it's fine, but everyone's heard that. Okay, that Malia <laughs> one is kind of catchy in an awful yeah. sort of way. Okay, kind of go go. Way. Okay, summary of <sighs> chapters. Go. Summary of chapters. 